Hey, hey party people welcome back to basics 101 series and today we'll learn about some remaining tools of this app let's start by making an enclosed circle this is because we are going to start with magic wand tool and for this we want something enclosed otherwise if we select this uh, you can see we selected the whole canvas but we don't want that we just want the circle so make a circle now use this tool and select in the circle and you can see this dotted line it means that your circle is selected add one more layer and let's fill in this color you will notice that whenever i leave my brush it just gets filled in the circle and not outside it you remember this also we used to do with clipping and alpha lock even if you use a bigger brush, it won't matter. This is really helpful to render some shadows and highlights. You know how to select it, but now after we are done, how should we unselect it or erase it? So. First, you should just go to the selection layer, this, and then use the eraser tool and erase on this circle. Now, if you go and draw on this circle, it will be shown outside the circle too. You can do this by selecting the same magic wand tool and then selecting the subtract option. You see I subtracted one part from the rest of the circle and now if I draw anything on this layer, it will only be shown on the two selected parts and not in the center one. This is really helpful when you want to color in two different parts which are kind of far away on the canvas. You can keep subtracting it and deselect the parts but I would suggest you to use that eraser option. Now let's talk about the filter tool. Yes, filters. You can actually use filters for your artworks. How does this help? You can change the colors of your artworks or maybe you just want to blur it out or you just want to give it some another shape. I'll show you. You just need to play around with your artworks because this is the thing about art. Even if you mess it up, it might actually look good. Maybe you like this color combination this might spark something in your mind and you'll be like okay maybe I should try this maybe I should uh, draw some rays or use such radial lines doesn't this kind of look like a snowflake see now I get an idea of drawing a snowflake this is how you can also play with your previous artworks to get some good ideas about your future artworks you can play with the thickness, the length of these lines and what not. You can keep what you like, you can erase the rest of it. You can go to artistic option and have a manga background or an anime background. You can also play with their brightness and contrast. You can add in a glitch filter or noise. Play with some shapes and sizes. You can use this sphere lens option which is something I really like. I mean look at this. Wow. It is kind of really good. It really inspires me to add some dark shadows and dark highlights. You can play with these shapes like this. My favorite filter is frames. This is like really useful for all artists uh, who want to use proportions for their artworks like in drawing faces or some bodies. Make sure to keep the rows and columns of same numbers to have perfect squares. 
but you gotta make sure that you don't use the same layer as the one with the filter. Add one more layer and then draw on it because otherwise you'll end up drawing on these filters itself which is of no use. Now let's talk about a tool called Frame Divider. Tap or anywhere on this square and select add frame and this will add a frame to your canvas. You can play with its thickness, uh, you can play with its size, you want it horizontally big or vertically, you want it in a square, you can change its colors too. You can add more frames by dragging in between these. You can select any one of these and play with its shape. You won't be able to draw anything on this layer so make sure you add one more. For moving on to the last tool, let's draw a circle. Fill in it with a color different from the square. Now we'll use canvas tool. This one is really useful if you want to change your canvas size. You can just go in and add a number for your width and height uh, and you will get a bigger square. If you want a rectangular shape then you will just have to turn off this keep aspect ratio and then add in your numbers. You see this blue shape, that's how your canvas will look. See, now it is a horizontal rectangle. I can just rotate it or I can invert it. I can also resize its pixels. These pixel numbers will really be helpful if you want to print your artworks. You can also crop your canvas to only the things you want. For example, here I just want this blue square. So I'll just go and crop my canvas. This is really useful when you later realize that your artwork isn't going to fit in the canvas size you chose and you just want to change the size. Last thing for today is I just want to talk about blending modes and screen tones. First draw a square on one layer and then add a circle also to another layer of different color. I'm just going to move it a little bit here because I like this. Now you see this arrow beside normal, select that. You can see there are many blending modes here. If you select darken, it will make that part of the circle which is on the square a little bit dark. It blends with red. This can be really helpful to render some shadows. You can also select something called multiply. You see, it is purple now. This is because blue multiplies with red, which creates purple. Just go and play with all these modes and you'll see how each of these have an effect on your artwork. You can play with its hue, saturation, luminosity, and whatnot. One thing to know that you want to have one layer beneath this one. So, if you try to add all these blending modes on the first layer, it won't work because there is no layer beneath it. So, I'll just have to bring this one up and then play with its modes. You see, now all these effects are on the circle. If you guys want me to give you deep information about all these, then please let me know in the comments. I just try to keep it as basic as possible. Let's talk about screen tones. I promise this is the last thing for today. You see, you can add some dots or 
horizontal, vertical, crisscross, diagonal lines to your artworks. This can be really helpful for fashion illustrators if they want to give some fabric looks. This reminds me that they have updated the app now and there are now 385 brushes. I mean, look at this. So many more brushes. There is also a brush now called tree. I mean, literally, you can just draw a tree by tapping on your screen. Isn't this amazing? This is kind of giving me some iPad feels. That is it for today. I hope you guys learned something new. If you did, like, share and subscribe. And if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. And I'll see you in the next video.